International Media TV. Television that listens to you. Hi, I'm Johnny Burrell. Welcome to the program. I paint people, people on journeys mostly. Um, many of my paintings are of people alone, traveling, perhaps carrying a suitcase or leaving the suitcase behind, um, leaving the baggage behind. Um, I feel like a lot of my paintings are self-portraits. They illustrate my life. They have a certain illustrative quality about them that um, captures the important events and especially the important emotions of my life. But sometimes people will come through and they'll stop in their tracks and they'll look at my work and they'll say, that's me. I thought I was the only one who felt that way. And then I know that this painting illustrates their life as well. Um, I just turned 50 and I'm discovering a whole new chapter of my life that um, where my life is going to be um, much more solitary as my kids are leaving home. And so I've been resolving that, working that through in my paintings. Um, um, I also do paintings of groups of people in celebration. Um, birthdays are really important in my family. And I, um, uh, I love how a birthday is a moment of celebrating not what you've accomplished, but who you really are. And so I have many paintings of people gathered around a birthday cake or arriving with a big celebratory hug. And I just, I just want to use that to pause and celebrate the people who are important to me in my life. Many of my paintings are also of dancers. And I think relationship is kind of a dance. Sometimes one person leads, sometimes another person leads. And um, so I try and capture that also, that, that complex dynamic in my painting. We're here for Spring Open Studios at Hunters Point Shipyard in San Francisco. I'm Kim Smith, a collage artist here on the shipyard. That we're celebrating our 25th anniversary of being out here this summer. There are about 300 artists out here, half of whom are doing Spring Open Studios. And we have artists in a wide variety of disciplines. Painters, drawing, sculptors, jewelers, textile workers, potters, anything you could possibly want, we're out here. I happen to be the lucky artist that's on the cover of the Shipyard Art Guide this spring. It's a collage that I did in honor of our 25th anniversary, and we're donating the original piece to Jacques Turgeon, who was the founder of the studios out here on the shipyard. I recently completed a series that took me about three years to do. It's a series of 45 autobiographical stories, mostly from my childhood growing up in Germany. When I was done, I compiled them all into a book entitled it Where Quirky Meets Menacing, an Autobiography and Collage. It's a series of stories, for example, starts out with, I was the fat when I was born, I was the fattest baby in the hospital, and goes on to other stories throughout my childhood, including one such as, every year my mother gets two turkeys and names one Thanksgiving and the other Christmas. One year we ate Christmas for Thanksgiving though because he kept pooping on the porch and my mother was tired of cleaning it up. The collages are all made with vintage materials. I've taken old, ch mostly children's book pages. I tear them out of the book, type my own story on a piece of paper and then cut all the words apart and lay them out on the, on the page. Once I get the placement right, I glue them down and then go back and cross out the existing words on the page in between so that the page is now only my story showing. I used illustrations on some of them, others a little bit of paint here and there, old photographs, things that I could find that related to the story. I've had a lot of fun having the book and I recently learned just a couple of nights ago that it's been chosen as a finalist for a National Book Award with the Ippy Awards. I'm very excited about that. It was a lot of work compiling this and believe me, to get, re to get rewards at the end is just amazing.
Birds are the true canaries in the coal mine of our planet. Uh, when I read a book by Scott Widensall called Living on the Wind, where he talked about bird migration, I felt like if I could show bird's nests to people, I could show them what they needed, or I could talk about what they needed. The bird's nests themselves are really phenomenal pieces of architecture. Can you imagine building them with a beak and a claw? The uh, bank swallow nest is built by two birds that dig a tunnel three feet deep on an upwardly sloping bank on an uh, ocean beach. There's one, they are um, part of two nesting sites that are left on the California coast. They're, they're not a threatened bird globally, but they are threatened locally because of habitat loss. The um, Caspian Turn Nest builds a nest as a, in a scrape on the ground and uh, camouflages itself with its eggs. The Grapple Nest was, is part of some habitat that was lost in Guatemala to a watermelon patch. So if I can tell you anything about caring about birds through these bird nest photographs, um, that's my goal is to teach people about what I care about deeply on the planet. You know, I, I just sort of do what I feel like doing. I don't have any, there's no plans. Uh, I just paint whatever comes. And they sort of reflect uh, the way I feel. And uh, it, it is kind of difficult to talk about paintings because it's, I usually want the paintings to talk for themselves, to be able to communicate what I'm trying to say instead of having all this literature behind it. But anyway, there's, there's the paintings. Uh, um, there's a, one right here, the, the artichoke, the hanging artichoke, and, and it's about a, a strange fruit. Uh, they sort of represent the human figure. Hello Manhattan, from San Francisco, Spring Open Studios, Hunters Point Shipyards, 2009. Oil paintings and watercolors. 2009, I'm doing inspired images from NASA and USGS satellite photographs of the Earth. Bering Alaska glaciers, Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia, the Selenga River in uh, Mongolia, places I've never been to, but it doesn't matter. They're great to paint. Back in 1973, I was doing watercolors in Eugene, Oregon. And man, the trucks were amazing. And, uh, and then that great painting in New York, that was from 116 Mercer, looking west directly toward New Jersey. An Edward Hopper sky if I ever saw one. My work is uh, in very um, difficult words, like um, in cryptic record of the um, images that were once uh, uh, imprinted on me but disappeared. And um, it's like um, my painting is uh, vi like a visual diary um, of the thoughts and feelings of that time of the time I was working on. For instance, like um, this particular painting, um, 
I love this kind of a free lines. The reason I like so much is um, uh, I think, in fact, uh, I'm longing for some kind of freedom from my life. And doing this work, um, I could incorporate it, my desire or uh, like a hope into my art. Um, this is bare branches, but you could tell uh, it's just like, um, you know, free abstract lines. So I don't really draw lines from the nature as like a drawing, but uh, I'm doing this um, like you're doing abstract uh, paintings. You have lines and colors and uh, space and things like that. And that's how I started. And um, this medium is more resin and charcoal and pastel. And um, particularly, th this is kind of a uh, huge size. Uh, dimensions are kind of large. It's a six feet by 12 feet. I looked at the panel um, and I love this kind of um, uh, new uh, grains of the wood. So I tried to use that nice pattern into my work. So that's what uh, finished it. I, I kind of uh, happy with it. Same, same time, um, this particular uh, painting, we call this diptych because we have two panels make one work, as you know. I started with um, like acrylic and then put, I, uh, put the images that could express m uh, my desire to put like a more uh, loneliness and space, but somehow it's very beautiful. Uh, that was my idea. So using uh, more common uh, images that we know of, but I try to express what I love to, uh, love to um, express. Like um, when you look at this painting, you could see very um, soothing, quiet, and loneliness but somehow very, very beautiful and misty. Um, that is what I um, wanted to do in my artwork, particularly this one. And um, for instance, uh, this one also more or less the uh, same tree series uh, that I do, but I call it trees, but um, it's in fact mixture of the lines. And more uh, um, important to me is uh, the line and free hands and free uh, freedom. And same time, uh, I expressed um, kind of a lines, um, kind of a free lines into that as energy and passions and and that kind of thing is uh, my really main motive of these paintings. I start with the uh, acrylic background and then worked with uh, pastels and finished with the uh, oil. Uh, my working process is like using different medium in different way. So uh, this is kind of layers and layers of work. So when you look at it, you have a very strong uh, kind of a dark tree branches and trunks, right? But that is to me is like a strength or a, a mixture of a passion and energy and freedom. That kind of thing is my really main uh, motive of this uh, painting. Same time, I put the nice color background behind. So you see a space, uh, kind of an emptiness, but somehow it's not really morose or dark, but it is more peaceful and tranquil. That is my um, kind of a, uh, the, be the idea behind of this work, and I think it, it was successful. I moved from Brazil uh, to San Francisco in 1992 to work as an engineer. And um, when I got here, being uh, far away, 
um, from all the familiar things, I could finally look inside of myself and see who I really was. And I realized I was an artist, not an engineer, and I started doing art right away. I started like with sculpture, so I wanted to do welding, so um, I learned how to weld and I did like loads of sculptures and, and then I did lots of drawings and I started painting and uh, I started some photography, conceptual work, so um, I really like found myself, like you know, there was no doubt why like I had been born. And this piece um, I'm showing here is just like one uh, example of my abstract work. And uh, the way um, I do my abstract work, it, it's uh, very different from like my conceptual work where the idea comes first. In the abstract work, it's, um, I just, it's very spontaneous, very intuitive. Uh, I don't have any preconceived idea of um, what's going to become. It just, um, you know, it just becomes and uh, I let it be. And I know when it's ready. So, um, it's quite different from my you know, conceptual work where the idea comes first and I know exactly what direction to take and I enjoy very much uh, both ways of working and I really feel like one helps the other. Growing up in India, I had the chance of having so many beautiful fabrics in front of me. And I mean, it's amazing. Uh, the place I come from, they had a lot of white fabric with gold borders. And different states in India had different kinds of techniques, weaves, and I was always fascinated by these fabrics. Um, I just, the climate dictated most of the colors sometimes, and that also intrigued me. And I've, I just liked the way the fabrics hung from the lines when the dobies would hang the saris, and it, the, in the wind they would blow back and forth, and they were just beautiful. Also, when the fabrics were unraveled, you know, they, the saris are five and a half to six yards. When they unraveled, they just, Oh, the patterns and the colors would just keep coming out and it just, it looked like a storybook to me. I mean, the way the, the patterns always told me stories and that's how I saw fabrics as. Um, after getting a design degree in India, I went ahead and did a master's in the U.S. With, in fabric design and that's what's gotten me to where I am right now. I just like to work with different kinds of fabrics, mainly a lot of silks. I work with wool and I also work with velvets. And I, the main thing is to dye them and print them to take the color out. I do like taking things apart, like taking the weaves out also. It just, it, you start looking at the structure of the fabric, which is really intriguing, how people made the fabric. And that's always what I liked.
Goodbye. Um, these are bags that I make out of recycled fabric. One day I was at my pillow makers and there were all these scraps and I asked him what, what's happening with those and he said oh they're going to the landfill I said oh no 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 they're going into my car now so my studio is piled high with with these um, pieces that are left over from him making tablecloths and I sat down and I said well, what can I do with it and I decided I can make shopping bags out of them so that's where they've come from I make shopping bags they go back over to him he cuts them out and we've got a symbiotic relationship going on that's great uh, and they've worked out very nicely they come in all kinds of colors they're large they're durable they're washable and you'll love them <laughs> I'm primarily an abstract painter. I use oil paint and I really love color. Color is really my inspiration and the way one color works next to another color. In fact, when I'm painting, I don't even start really with an idea of what it is I'm going to make. I have an empty canvas, I pick some colors and I start. And whatever color I put down, I respond to and the next color I put down, it works with that color and I'm very excited just by seeing the color and the shape and the stroke. And then as I keep working and, and I see what I've done, a story develops. And by the time I'm finished with the painting, I've been through many memories and emotions and uh, also reactions to just what I've done, whether it's good or not. And by the time I'm finished with the painting, there's a story there. Now, it's a personal story, and you may not know what the story's about, but you'll see something else. That's another thing about abstract painting that's so valuable, is you can read what you want into it. You, too, will respond to certain colors in a certain way. I don't know how you'll do that. It'll be different than the way I respond, but you'll have some, something to look at, something to reflect upon, and something to respond to. A lot of my work is mixed media where I'll use found objects that I see on the ground or images from magazines and I like to do mixed media alternating with painting because it's a very different process. I'm still looking and my eyes getting a thrill and I'm arranging and I'm making decisions and making visual decisions and that's what painting's about, that's also what mixed media is about. But an important difference is, with mixed media, I've got all this flotsam and jetsam that I've saved, things that I like and I respond to for whatever reason, and I don't always know why. And with mixed media, I get to arrange those pieces that are in front of me. So it's a matter of having, having flotsam and jetsam that you really like looking at and then arranging it in a way that makes a composition that somehow speaks to you. In fact, I often work on a piece a number of days I will arrange uh, flat on a table on a white table the little pieces and I'll decide oh this looks really good and then I'll I'll leave and I'll come back and another day I'll realize oh something's missing I need something over here and so that's how I work in in mixed media and I'm often surprised by the the stream of consciousness that pops up when I'm working and it's the same thing that happens with painting it's a stream of consciousness and I like um, zeroing in on that sort of subconscious or interconscious layer and I learn a lot about myself so to a certain extent painting for me all these years has been a kind of therapy I'm in a quiet room I'm by myself with only my thoughts no one else is affecting me except whatever's gone before in the art world or in my life My work deals with the urban environment in general. I'm really interested in the way that huge structures in the city that people overlook, things like billboards, gasometers, even huge water towers, people really see them as eyesores or they, they just don't appreciate the inherent value and beauty in them. Um, when I first moved 
from England. I was lucky enough to get a studio out here at Hunters Point, overlooking this view you can see behind me. And I would come in in the morning and I would leave in the late afternoon and the light would change the whole feel of this place. And I could really begin to see how beautiful even environments like this are. Um, my drive out here is, is I go under underpasses and overpasses and it, it's just really urban and it's derelict and it's really quite beautiful whatever time of the day you see it. Um, I'm primarily a printmaker so I, I work in monotype which en enables me to make several prints of one image and I can change the colours and the mood, I can bring atmosphere in which is really what I'm interested in. I'm trying to bring a sense of atmosphere and place to these objects. Somebody once described it to me as um, ugly beautiful. You take what is perceived as ugly and you, you turn it into something that's beautiful with the, the way the light shines on it, the way it changes. So that's really my primary interest. I take objects and I squeeze them into the picture plane. So I take a really huge object like a billboard and I'll squeeze it into the picture frame so that you get that sense that it's a huge structure. Um, and I make prints that are much larger than usual. Um, I make prints that are maybe 60 inches by 40. So they really do give you that dynamic um, feel.